Yeah, so um, I just wanted to, first of all, thank Nina for like sharing her work and letting me jump in there. And I'm, I'm going to be sharing some of uh, the work that you, your students have done with my students. Um, both my, I'm not teaching seniors this year, but we do like a senior service project, which is like kind of really tied in around wicked problems, which like are the same issues that your students are addressing. And your approach of like doing the upstander approach, upstanders is like really awesome. I just wanted to, uh, you know, give you a shout out. And hopefully, like, I, I love Chris's uh, comment around like his, um, his protocol for like the feedback thing. Mm -hmm. And I don't it know if I'm doing it. Was it, wasn't that, huh? it was just three words, by the way. I know, but it's so, it so resonated with me. I'm like, oh, I know, I'm just am, I, am, I do, am I doing that? Uh, anyway, but. Uh, yeah, hopefully uh, the feedback that I'm providing is useful. I'm going to also like try to get uh, get both some of the seniors and some of my juniors to like dig in some of the uh, you know pieces and uh, give some feedback as well because I know like my feedback is one kind of feedback, but getting feedback from your peers is a whole different a whole different level. Yeah, cool. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. That was teacher seeking teachers. That was uh, <laughs> quick. No. <laughs> Thanks, it. Sam, talk talk briefly about your kids have put up some poems too, right? Yeah. So, oh yeah. In fact, we're coming off of last week a big week of uh, poetry and advocacy doing the poem in the pocket event. We did a like a real awesome uh, school wide uh, poetry uh, parade that we went out into a community rec center, shared poetry. Then we went and presented some of our one of our poets and got to present. Uh, at the uh, school district uh, board meeting. And that was just really awe-inspiring. Um, her sharing like really brave, brave poetry in front of like uh, an adult, a big a big audience. It was just, it was really powerful. And we also, I'm not wearing it today, but we also created these like um, uh, pocket square poems. I'm not wearing it, but anyway, we ha we created these really cool literal like poem in the pockets and so i created those with my ninth graders really so, really awesome so sam sam you're not gonna get away with it wait you're not wearing the the pocket square but what are you wearing oh that's just another pocket square but it's not the poem pocket square one yeah <laughs> you, you wear that every day you wear uh, no oh well today i had op i had an observation so i had to like, like look um you know a little correct um, All right. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. yeah, Nina. So, no, uh, yeah. So, so sorry, Paul. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Yeah. So <laughs> Nina, teachers, teaching teachers on May first, by the way. Go ahead. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about yourself, Nina. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I know you're I, in Oakland doing some I, bad stuff. Awesome stuff. Thanks. Yeah. I'm. I'm in Oakland. I teach uh, ninth graders, so it's a humanities. Um, English ethnic studies chord class and so we kind of look at system of oppression in the fall moving into liberation in the spring and cap it off with these upstander projects so my students get to sort of take everything they learned and and apply it which is pretty fun yeah, yeah. oh so you know what tell them like I might have went overboard with my, with my comments because I'm thinking they're like closer to like our seniors because they're doing similar kind of like we have our our ninth graders doing something, but not same level that our seniors were. But like, so I mean, the worst years ninth graders would. I mean, I mean, anyway, the ones that I've read, they're like really impressive stuff. Um, you know, age appropriate, but still impressive. And so, like, I went in, and if maybe I'm doing too much, they might say, "Oh, this guy's doing too much," because my comments were like, I, I just actually I just got off of one of the pieces. It was around. Um, body shaming yeah and the reason i had to respond to that i couldn't not respond because my student just like posted a piece on you voices around a poem around body shaming which was the, like really the fat, powerful yeah the, called fat girl, fat girl. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. okay and yeah. so i had to like a great poem yeah i had to respond to your piece that that piece because it was so related so i then linked i linked it and told the uh the authors to check out her poem. And I kind of like, I kind of, I kind of did some pushing as well because like they're really going hard at the executives, like, oh, we're calling them out, which is cool. Like you can call them out. But I'm like, 
Yeah, you could call them out, but like the really way to really hurt people is like go through their pocketbook. So like do mm -hmm. a boycott, right? And mm -hmm. so like they might say, man, this guy's talking too much. And they're ninth graders, so they might be like, he's really talking too much. So yeah, if, tell them, tell them I'm sorry if I'm, I was doing too no, much. No, I think, I mean, when I saw Chris's comment, I'm like, they need pushes. I think when we start on Youth Voices in the fall, it's all about, thank you for writing. You know, they're, they're ninth graders, they're more nervous, but these pieces, they, a lot of them took some really big leaps at people and they push that I think they need push back. I think that's where they are developmentally. So I think push is, is where it should be because we went over boycotts. We looked at all different tactics of social change and it was kind of interesting to see who picked safer ones sort of. Um, yeah, it's, it, easy to call, the wall. it's easy to call executives out. Oh, you're horrible. Mm -hmm. Oh, you yeah. suck. Like that's easy. I mean, like, cause they really kind of called them out too in that piece. Like they were like, "Yeah, yo, you guys," and they capitalized the "you." Why? Oh, yeah. you. It's you. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, yeah, that's 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 cool. Yeah. That's well, cool. the fun part of the project, I don't know if you noticed, is they all had to create an Instagram account. Also. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I didn't notice so, that. Cool. The Instagrams are super interesting. Um. Because it's funny, we, you know, we spent all year talking about professional commenting. And I said, even when you go to your Instagram, you're representing your movement. And some of them have just gone off the deep end on their Instagram, where I've had to, you know, with language. And it's interesting how all of a sudden, because the interface is Instagram, that they're so used to that medium, how they're constructing posts and tagging and really calling people out. So I'm, I'm looking forward to debriefing that because it's been about five days of action now post the proposals where they've been acting on their plans and they're really, um, they're getting heated in their little 14 year old ways around comments and people commenting back. To, like they, they're just getting so many responses. Yeah, and, and I don't have time to follow like their Instagram. So I'm, yeah. not, I'm not going there at all, but I did. Let's talk about how that could be easier in a minute. I, here. But yeah, yeah. I did give one comment on um, how, like the one kid had a piece where they used like some cool data. They used a cool graph to show like how um, uh, sexual abuse happens at like over the age ranges, uh. and it was, like right in the, it, it was like a real cool graph. I'm like, oh, awesome! Using data to represent stories is real powerful, and you should like push that. You should push that um, in your in your Instagram posts. Like, come up with like graphs and memes and uh -huh. visuals. Because, but actually, I think they should have actually used it in the. It, it, I, I know they're doing like these informational papers, but like, we we pushed our kids towards like using infographics instead of writing a bunch of you know expository text and stuff. So mm -hmm. that, that was cool. So. Um, no, it was exciting, and like I say, literally, um, I, I had to come on because I literally just gave feedback to some of your work, and I just wanted to say hi and thank you and tell you to keep doing the amazing work that you're doing. Well, cool. Thanks for those comments. I appreciate it. So, Sam, you're too much, but that is a compliment, you know. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Y yeah, yeah, yeah. The number of times I've been told I'm too much, it's got to be a compliment. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm still trying to get my students. To, like a lot of their poems are done, but man, getting kids to post them is just like a headache sometimes. You know, because you gotta bug them, and you know, like yeah. How did you like get all your kids to post all their stuff? Well, we make it. I, I devote a, a class period to posting. And so I do kind of screenshots of directions and there's an exit ticket. And I just say like, it has to be posted. Um, you know, I've done it in the past where I, I give them a deadline and they do it on their own time. And it doesn't it, get it, done. It doesn't get done. And, and, and I, with I, grade, you, knew, you, you do need to be like super, super explicit with it. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah but this yeah. is their fourth or fifth post this year, right? This is our, uh, I think it's our fourth. Okay. fourth, yeah, fourth or fifth, um, and they're they're much faster at doing it now. Um, but even we need after, to even after the block change, they they 
have made that adjustment, I think. Or? Yeah, and it's easier now, actually, I think. I think so, too. Yeah. 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 Um, but we make it really public. So when someone publishes, I, like, announce it. Everyone claps. It's always a race. Who can figure it out first? Oh, cool. It becomes a really fun class period. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. I'm, gonna I'm, I'm teaching one ninth grader class, and I'm trying to get them to uh, – get their poems posted. So I'm, I'm going to try that with my ninth graders. Yeah. I like with, with the ninth graders, it's this project that makes them like these voices the most. Like yeah. all year long, it feels like just an activity. They're like, oh, we have to publish. And it's no, they, you, can see they're, you, can, you can see in the writing, like they're really invested. They're passionate mm -hmm. about it. They care about it. Like, yeah, you, you, can, really, you can really see that. And then the fact yeah. that Oh, you, you could maybe brief, talk briefly about like how you got them to like uh, work together because that's that's always a challenge as well, right? And you both of them are like co co authored, like the ones yeah. that I've read so far, they're all co authored. Yeah, they're all groups. Um, so we actually we split up the writing. So when they're doing research, they're all researching on a different aspect of the the writing piece. So they kind of write their parts and then have to edit it together. And the plan has to be collaborative. So that's how it, the writing gets pulled into one. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, kudos. Uh, again, I'm, 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 I'm running because I'm not even at home. I'm out at a coffee shop and I, I need to get home. So I just wanted to tie it top, you know, t touch base and before. And it, I, I can say hi to. Uh, say Chris Cohen can take your place. Yeah, <laughs> but I can say we can say hi before I roll. And, and, but and, I'm happy and, to share stuff with you all too, like any of the the tools and stuff. Oh, speaking of which, share. sharing, I'm sorry, Paul, if I'm talking too much. <laughs> You're leaving, so go ahead. Uh, I've been I've been playing around with this really cool space for like educators to curate and share. It's called Curio. Um, hmm. And you guys should check it out. I'll I'll put it I'll put it in the in the um on the uh in the group chat, and you guys could check it out. It's, 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 I actually I have a like a I have a youth I have a youth voices hmm. uh stack of like um, materials from youth voices. So even some of your pieces, I'm, so, I'm going to be like putting them on. My, Curio or my curio stack. So I dropped the ball on that. Let's we'll we'll reconnect, okay? Oh yeah, I yeah, def most definitely. That. We just had them out here in Philly at, uh, for yeah, our fine. tech I'm conference. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> definitely, definitely. But yeah, Chris cool. Sloan. Before before I, before I roll, uh, any 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 other wisdom from you, sir? Any <laughs> other wisdom? Uh, uh, um, that's a tough question. Um, no, I was just trying to chime in on and see what Nina's been up to um, I was a little late in joining so sorry about that it's cool you're here now yeah Sam I, I we won't answer this question tonight but one of the things that I, that I wanted to put in the mix for you to think about is uh, people in the National Writing Project are starting to gear up around civics learning and um, in particular maybe, I don't know what it's going to be called, but some iteration of letters to the next president, you know, coming up in this atmosphere. Mm -hmm. and, you know, your work, and, and I don't know if there are others in Oakland doing the same kind of upstander work, but there's already been a good question about why are youth taking their hard, you know, heartfelt issues and addressing these people about it, right? Uh, meaning, meaning those people running for president. That, that you know, they, they, maybe there are other people they could address. So I think your upstander projects help us think about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. So, so I don't know. Maybe it could be called letters for change instead of letters to the next president. You know, <laughs> because because we're also worried about in the present atmosphere, how do you write a letter to the next president? You know, it's without mm -hmm. cursing a lot. Without being very partisan, I should say, right? Right. But, yeah, the nuance thing. Yeah. thing. yeah. I don't like think my you... students are very partisan. <laughs> um, but well, they're they're committed, but I don't know about partisan. You know, they're probably not partisan. But think. they could they could learn a little nuance, like I say, when they like, how do you call somebody out without like, I don't know, how do you call them out? Not in a polite way, but in in a way that's going to get. 
like some real results instead of like some patronizing. Oh, thank you for your letter. Because mm -hmm. you know that's what happens a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for your letter, especially with kids, because we always like patronize kid young people. You know, like, oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So be thinking about that, and let's um, continue. I want to give you an out if you want to run, Sam, but stay. Yeah, cool. Like yeah, like I said, I'm sending you guys an uh, <laughs> uh, invite to collaborate on this Youth Voices of Curio. And, uh, Paul, I'm going to set up a, a, a meet for, we, uh, for us to chop it up with, with Cur some cu the Curio folks on the on the teacher. Okay. teacher. Cool. All right. Thanks, All right, guys. Sam. All right, peace. What's happening, Sam? See ya. All right. That's Thanks. Sam Reed from Philadelphia at the U School. If you want to follow up, you can find the U School. Um, Chris Lung from Salt Lake City, Utah. We didn't do inter introductions. So Sorry. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Uh, Nina, um, yeah, I was really impressed with your work. So I uh, teach at uh, high school. I teach English and media production and photography in Salt Lake City hmm. uh, at Judge Memorial. Um, and yeah, so we, I don't know about your schedule, but we, I've got my seniors for about, uh, two weeks now and then they're done. Sounds yeah, like we have about seven graders. more days. <laughs> really? Ninth graders. Yeah. Yeah. We finish, uh, my seniors are done on the 17th. Wow. And they've got to get that paper done before then. That's the idea. Yeah. And most of them actually are pretty good with that. So there'll be some people still chiming in on stuff, though. That's why Nina's call. I didn't really see them today, but um, they'll, you'll be seeing some. Your students will be getting some feedback starting tomorrow. Oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Nina, Nina, Sam jumped right in. Do you want to introduce yourself, say where you teach, and oh. how you've been doing that, and that kind of thing? Sure. Is, um, that, your, is that your strike um, shirt? This is, yeah, well, it's May Day. I'm wearing the union shirt. Okay. It's, it's Labor's Day. Labor's Day. Um, yeah. yeah, so I'm um, over at Life Academy in East Oakland, um, teaching humanities, English and ethnic studies to ninth graders. And I have been working with Youth Voices for about two and a half years. So, Chris, I, I know of you from Joe. <laughs> I feel like I heard uh, name. <laughs> yeah, what's she up to now? So she's not teaching. I know she's been doing some teacher training work, kind of mentoring some folk, but I haven't really connected with her, which is sad. She has been she was a big mentor for me when I first yeah. got into Oakland about five years ago. But, we um, all miss you, Joe. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so she got me on Youth Voices and um, kind but of- she's working with lots of teachers engagement. all over the place. But sorry, go ahead. Yeah, she yeah. does. She has like little Joe babies all over Oakland. Yeah. It's true. Well, I think further than that now, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, so I was telling Sam, we just, our year sort of ends with this upstander thing. So this is sort of my second iteration of it. Um, getting my students to really pick an authentic audience, do authentic research, craft a plan, do the plan, and then reflect on it. So there's sort of these three stages. And publishing yeah. is stage one. Oh, this is stage one. Yeah. So right now they're in um, a week of action. So if you if you look at the post, they kind of write their plans at the bottom, based mm. on past tactics on the same issue. And so they've had five days of action that they are documenting using Instagram. So mm. they had to create new Instagram accounts. They have to take pictures of them doing the action with captions and hashtags. And I follow them with a special teacher Instagram account. So that I can see what they're doing because they leave the classroom sometimes. So like one group was doing chalking. And so during class, they were out there chalking statistics all mm -hmm. over the blacktop. Wow. There's some really cool stuff. I noticed one of the photos looked like there were students out kind of um, like they were raising their hands. Um, kind of like maybe they were at some kind of demonstration or they put on a yeah, uh, I don't know if the voices picture is any of them, I, unless they've updated their posts. I'm not sure if they've mastered updating yet. Um, <laughs> but then starting um, Friday, actually, we begin like a trifold process. And so they're going to be doing trifolds where they reflect on 
their actions. And we do like a community event where people come in and sort of grade them live mm. on sort of how they were as upstanders. Wow. Were they effective? So that's sort of the, the whole project. Do they get to see the youth voices post at the yeah. tripod? So that, yeah. do they so, put them out and put it on the tri? Yeah. Some of them, yeah. So it's really interesting. Um, last year, some of the groups, their entire action project was centered around youth voices. So they wanted to see how many comments they could get. And that was how they measured their effectiveness, right? Mm. So mm. we're effective as upstanders if people are reading our work. Um, some groups that was part of their project this year, not the center, but they've been working on replying back. A lot of them put the link to their posts and their, up their Instagram accounts. So that was sort of like their first step of their plan. And we, um, we actually created a class checklist of what does it mean to be an effective activist? Like, how do you know if what you did worked? And a lot of this was centered around the Oakland teacher strike because a lot of students felt that we were not effective at all. Um, and a lot of teachers felt that way too. I mean, we got a new contract, but it only passed by 58%. It didn't meet a lot of our demands. A lot of students did not want us voting yes on the contract. Um, they were really active with us on the front lines. And so they, um, yeah, they, they created a list of effectiveness that really built off the strike. Wow. And so they're really game. They're really pushing for some big changes it, in it their built, proposals. It, it built off their their critique of the strike. You mean the critique of it? Um, mm -hmm. Their angst around it. Them feeling that you know, just writing or just posting isn't enough. Um, really wanting to get at people in power. So it's been interesting because I think. You know, ninth graders are big eyed and bushy tailed and want change. And then they got really jaded mid year. Mm -hmm. And now they're kind of coming back, trying to reinvigorate some of that hopefulness that you usually see in ninth grade. And I think the strike squashed. I mean, kids were pissed off mm. in Oakland after the strike. They were pissed off because of the compromises they felt? The compromise. Yeah. They were mad at their teachers. They felt that we sold them out hmm. for like very just oh causes. God. Wow. Um, but it, feel that way a bit too, it really captured <laughs> yeah. how it went down here. Now, we just, you know, if it's over, it's success. So that's what we did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I'm kind of behind. Uh, sorry to join okay. a little bit late. So, um, can it was I just Sam talking before you got here? Okay, great. <laughs> so I was just wondering about kind of the context of things and and how you got to these posts right now because like I'm looking at the anti gun violence in schools mm -hmm. post. That was the one I was thinking of where it seemed like they had taken a photo of these are kids demonstrating about guns in the background. Yeah, I think the they just signs. found it from the internet. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah. But um, but do they have how... an Instagram account? Yeah, they all have Instagrams. It should say on the bottom. So can we use the one Chris has brought up as, as an example to go through in more detail? Or would you rather use another one? Oh, we can use this one. Do you want me to pull up their Instagram and I'll do find it. a way to share that? I'll do it. You keep talking. Okay, I th the Instagram is at school. Oh, the I'm Instagram. Reading. Yeah, let's talk Aren't about it. Cool. Yeah, you're you're getting me there. Let's start with the post on Youth Voices, and then we'll get to the Instagram. Okay, right. totally. And, and so, but let me keep asking while while this is coming up. The um, do do their Instagram posts have tags? Could we find them easily, or how does that work? Um, they do have tags. Um, I think the easiest is to go to. You can pull up a desktop of Instagram. Yeah. So, you should be able to pull up their account. But let me tell you, what I'm trying to figure out is if there's a way to add a block of the Instagram account on their Youth Voices post. Oh, that would be so cool. Right. So, but I, I don't know if we can figure that out. But let's, Chris, which one was it? Let's go back and start. Anti-gun violence in schools, I think. Okay, so this is the page that you go to if you go to the upstander category. Mm -hmm. which, which just we're saying, I said this to you earlier, but 
we we get to see last year's and this year's here mm -hmm. which is nice i i think um for next year's kids too but or anybody else who wants to kind of see what you're doing all right where's the gun one what's it look like it's anti-gun violence in schools it was published by lupita with like the students holding their fist up here we go am i sharing my screen yeah mm -hmm. okay go ahead i'll just present and you can talk about it <laughs> so assume we don't know anything about this project you you were saying earlier what we do but you were saying earlier that you divide this like is it three or four youth create this or be specific yeah. about this one yeah yeah totally so there i can share my screen also i don't know if that's okay. yeah helpful. That. absolutely let me so the project yeah so now i think you can see my screen we can yeah um and you, Chris? yeah okay good so our unit is all about tactics of social change, seeing how do you measure the effectiveness and the impact of a tactic and then what role can they play as an upstander. And so we start off looking history wise at Vincent Chin, um, who was murdered in Detroit, which led to kind of a wave of protests and marches in the 80s in the Asian American community. Um, Paul, I think you're still showing your screen on the Oh, yes, though. Sorry. Um, not on. I don't think so. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I see ahead. yours, Paul. I'll stop sharing my. Hold on. I don't yeah. Know. So we look at that and we watch this interesting documentary that was made by students out of USC called Vincent Who, which analyzes how a lot of people don't know who Vincent Chin is. And so you kind of look at all these movements and look at their effectiveness if people don't remember them, sort of. Where is that? in this document you're showing us? Um, that's just sort of the pre-work. Okay, um, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I can get you that information, but that's what kind of gets us to this project. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of look at these three things that I highlighted. So we, I'm, I'm you know, we write a project proposal in the format of a letter, looking at credible research and root causes, then we take action and then we reflect. Um, and so the writing piece, this is just sort of the calendar of it all. That's um, really useful. Yeah, go ahead. yeah, and then the outline is where they really start working as a group. And so they split up the letter. And so you can see they're all organized very similarly. Um, one person works on researching the author. And they have to come up with five different potential authors that they can write to. So audiences. Audiences. Yeah, mm -hmm. sorry, audiences. Um, so they were looking at the NRA. They were also looking at writing to students who attended Parkland, right? So they were thinking about what are all the different audiences and what are the moves I'd make as a writer, depending on that audience, looking at both opponents and allies. One student was looking at the issue themselves and doing background research. One student was looking at past tactics of social change in terms of how have other people addressed the issue. And we, um, we studied 12 different tactics. So it could be economic pressure, civil disobedience, militant rebellion, propaganda, education, direct service. And so there's an organizer I can share um, about that. And then together, once they did their research, they so, had to come up with a plan. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll go back to that. Go oh ahead. yeah, so plan and closing statement and annotated bibliography was sort of the group effort because um, that was sort of based on all of the research. And so we researched first, um, and I can actually show you a different tool we use for research that um, colleagues, we've actually, this is a tool we use school-wide. Um, where is it? Um, now I can't find this one. It's called the Group Research Tracker. So this is how we have students starting research in our high school as ninth graders. Hmm. And so this one I modified for the parts of the proposal, but actually our seniors even use it for their research projects, similar to what Joe used to do at Fremont. So when they're doing research, we have them filling this out. So they're capturing all the pieces in order to later cite. So you say your school uses this, meaning 9 through 12? 
Nine through 12. Yeah. We sort of developed this as a tracker because everything's online now. Like when I did research, I used note cards, you know, it, and it doesn't work anymore. And so we needed something. So they weren't just researching as they wrote and plagiarized. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so this was sort of the tool we've come up with over the last couple of years. Cool. Yeah. So then from there, they then wrote. Can you say a little more about how the impact that has that your whole school is working on this? Or in what way? Yeah. Um, I mean, our our kids' research has really gotten better. I don't know what else to say. Um, I mean, I feel like when I came four years ago to the school, uh -huh. as I found, I was teaching somewhere else that I got to Life Academy and teachers were doing a little too much of the lifting and the thinking. I think it's because the internet is so big and it's really hard to teach research. Mm -hmm. um, and so we kind of came up with this tracker as a way to give more ownership to students mm -hmm. as well as um, it's not in this folder to share, but we, we teach them all the Google search tricks like how to capitalize and and the quote marks. And that's why you see the section that says search terms on here mm -hmm. that we're actually asking them to track the terms that give them the right information, mm -hmm. um, which has enabled me in ninth grade to do annotated bibliographies mm -hmm. and really ask them to step up their research. Um, I used to just do, we do these blogs. Those are also on Youth Voices, but I used to kind of curate for the blogs. They'd get like research packets almost. And I don't do that anymore because with this tracker and teaching them the search terms, I don't have to, cool. which has been really nice <laughs> for them and me. <laughs> yeah. So don't want to go there, but I'll, I'll mention that Chris has, has a really nice description of how he's using now comment to, mm -hmm. to, what you just said is you used to give them a packet that you cur curated, mm -hmm. where his students are curating packets, really, it's sort of text packets themselves as oh, they do research. Cool. So that's interesting. And it'd be interesting to start thinking about them sharing those with each other, too. But, but keep yeah. I just, yeah. Well, I would like to know more about now. I mean, what's hard is I teach in ninth grade, and so mm -hmm. our school's really tiny. No one teaches beyond one grade. So there's like one ninth grade English, one 10th grade English, one 11th, one 12th. And I think where my school's at too is like, how do we de-scaffold? So like by 12th grade, they should be making their own readers of their research, right? By 11th grade. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know how, how do you, I, my question for you, Chris, is then how does collaboration work around your department so that students can get there by 12th grade? Well, uh, well, how can they get there? First of all, yeah, um, be on collaboration with other people. Um, you know, so I'm just I collaborate with the other teacher who teaches seniors. So, um, you know, if we use this now comment tool, um, the fa it, like their research thinking is more public um, mm -hmm. on now comment because their their comments are there, and so they're in charge of putting their sources into now comment and then organizing them via a feature that collects them all together then. Um, mm -hmm. And so that to me, um, I'm trying to answer the scaffold question. Um, just trying to, it's not easy. Um, just trying to get them into the habit of using the tool and making sure they annotate and talk about things. Uh, and then the step of maybe trying to invite others to comment on their annotations is, mm. it's, you know, it takes a while. Um, yeah. But m they get there by the end. Um, so the scaffolding question is another question, but I just, the first thing I wanted was to make their research, research project process a little more uh, visible to me. Mm. So you can see what they're annotating. They pull yeah, all their articles into that. 
Yeah, because sometimes I'll, I would get something where a student would make this connection after reading this article and, you know, and I would see the source of the article and I'd think like, huh, how, how did they get that from that source? Mm -hmm. And then if you lay bare the article with annotations, you can start to at least see their thinking. And then I can chime in on the, you know, the, when I give them some feedback, like, oh, um, you know, there's another example of what you're talking about an even better one in paragraph 14. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. um, is Anthony Richardson your kid? He, he, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Sorry. Should I show that quickly? Um, sure. It's it was just the most recent one, but just, okay. Just so there's some visual here. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, um, but while we're doing that, Nina, I'm really impressed with this process here. This is really cool. All the stuff you have. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, how much of it? I mean, you've developed it. It's been developed in Oakland. I it's, mean, yeah, I work kind of in a silo. It's really sad. Um, yeah, I don't know anyone to silo. collaborate with. <laughs> well, okay. So here's, so this is an article that, um, I don't know why he calls himself a professor, but he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have control over their names, which is a so good funny. But Anthony Richardson, um right mm -hmm. this is his post i mean this is a an article that he found i wonder no he didn't necessarily link to the article that would be nice to have done but anyway in his youth voices post um no i mean here oh right right right, right. right. so he that's another the article into now comment that's yeah. correct oh and then, and then and then the, then he made some comments here and then he can go and invite others to join. Can you go back there for a second? I will. Paul? Yeah. Because I'm seeing uh, another feature is it looks like he did get something at the bottom from somebody else, like mm -hmm. Mr. Lewis. Mr. Lewis. Oh, interesting. A challenge in a way. Right. So. Mm -hmm. I, I don't uh, know if it's a challenge or an explanation. Yeah. Right. But um, that kind of shows at least conversation over about your annotations mm -hmm. yeah, is another way to help them think through the sources and for me to see their thinking about the sources. Yeah, do you ever use this in like a jigsaw method? So like different groups are reading articles on the same topic and then they read each other's annotations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting, cool. Uh, I wanted to check quick. And then, you know, like things like, well, kind of like I mentioned with my email comment to you about like what mm -hmm. kind of comments are you looking for? Sometimes when they were writing an argumentative piece, I would have some other group, you know, someone who wasn't doing the same topic go there and, and be devil's advocate or that kind of thing. Yeah. I loved, I liked how you named, that was such a good tag phrase for comments. Yeah. It's not mine. It's I uh, it's, I forget who in national writing project there. We'll say it again though. Right, wasn't it? Um, I mean, I, bless, bless, address, and press. Yeah. So bless it, just like I love it, you know. And people need that sometimes, oh. like yeah. Um, and then address something, and and in my context, a lot of times addressing means asking questions mm -hmm. or um, giving them links to resources that maybe they didn't um, necessarily well that they didn't use and the, the responder is thinking that maybe they might want to read that. And then press is the idea of, like I mentioned a bit ago, being a devil's advocate and saying, like on this, go, to go back to your students' work, Nina, the gun mm -hmm. one, um, you know, like to take on the, actively take on the perspective of an NRA member and to push back on some of their um, claims in their the latest Youth Voices post that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. I love that framework. I will, yeah. I will drop this after this point, but this is Anthony's, um, this is the one we looked at most mm -hmm. recently. I mean, just now, most recently, let me share this again. But as he's doing the research, this is another one he put up and I think this is another one. Yeah. So we he now has four articles about success. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that right? Mm -hmm. um, and this one, let's look at this one. I don't know what the title of this is, but. And then is that his senior project about success? And he gets to capture um, Well, it's just, I had him do, um, let's see, about a five week research project on uh, just explaining a concept. Hmm. So um, they're doing a, they do another thing to kind of leave the building that I call the graduation gift. But this was just <laughs> the latest thing um, that uh, was just researching some concept that they thought they could explain to someone. Oh, cool. Doesn't have as much sizzle as your project. So, <laughs> so the reason, the, so the reason I, I thought of it is because your students also have these annotated bibliographies, right? Yeah. So they, they end up with four or five articles at the end of their posts, right? So this anti-gun one has, where's it start? Here's the annotated bibliography, and then I am sharing this now, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, good. So thank you. Um, and then there's this little paragraph. So they write these paragraphs together more or less or? Yeah, so going back to this research tracker, I think, I don't know if my screen shared still. Um, so they all had to find it. It shares with the video, yeah, but go ahead. Yeah, they all had to find at least five sources for their section because in ninth grade, it has to be equitable when it's a group project. <laughs> and then they all had to create the annotated bibliography for those five things. And then whatever they used for writing got published. Got it. So they ended up having to do more than they needed, which is what we were pushing them to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is a wonderful experience for ninth graders. One of the nice things about your school being so small is will the 10th grade teacher see this and be able to build upon it? Yeah, totally. I mean, yeah, we definitely. use the same I'll question if it doesn't happen. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we use the same like research tracker and scaffolding tools. Mm -hmm. um, and she picks up the work on like root causes. So a lot of this project is, you know, analyzing an issue. What are the roots? Who is harmed? Who benefits? And she kind of takes that into um, they do world history the next year. So she uses a lot of the similar framework around oppression and tactics of liberation and, and stuff like that. So I'm not saying anything you haven't said to me already, but we got to get them, get her on Youth Voices. I too, know. So that Youth I, Voices can become a portfolio of their work over time. Right? I say that every year and everyone keeps thinking it's too much extra work. And I'm like, you don't understand. It makes everything easier. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's hard. I know. I, every year I send out a plug to everyone. But, yeah, maybe just, you know, start with a couple things and see mm -hmm. how she can see that herself. But, yeah, that would be great. Um, I know. Do you mind if we shift to, because I, I'm worried about running out of time. I want to see some of the um, Instagram things and think about how those might get integrated. Yeah. Um, Were you able to pull and, up? Instagram? Uh, let me, um, am I still sharing? <laughs> I'm confused here. Too. Um, just not. You're not sharing your screen. Okay, I'm getting there. Yeah, let me, yeah, let, if I can't do it, I'll let you do it. I'll have you do it. But yeah, I'm trying to think. In the meantime, let me show you one thing that is working. So, um, and this is a different project, but we're using Instagram too in this um, photo project. Right. So what's on top here is is stuff that's been posted on Youth Voices. But if you scroll to the bottom, these are things that um, are on Instagram using the NW the NWP places tag. So oh. we're able to pull anything that has that tag onto this page. Oh, interesting. Right. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to think about. So post an Instagram tag to NWP places. So they, but your kids would have to have like a common tag that's somewhat unique, like NWP places or something, right? Right. So if I got them to use that, it would start pulling their their things. Yeah. So we could set up a like an upstander tag or no? Yeah, I'm just worried about upstander being a little too right. Like, I think it's too common. Life, life upstander or something. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's really interesting. So I don't know if that's, th this is just one solution. There yeah. Might, there might be others for us to brainstorm here. Um, so, but let's find it first. Where did you see Yeah, I'm it? trying to see. So on the bottom of the post, you should be able to see Lupita's oh. Hold on. Instagram. They do like follow at. So at the bottom of this piece, would it be here or at the bottom? At the bottom of what they wrote. Gun violence? So what I just did, let me see if I can, I might be able to share this screen. Hold on. I'll stop. You continue. Okay. Because I, I logged into, because I have a special Instagram account to follow them. <laughs> Last yeah. year, I, I was new at this and not very big on Instagram. And so... I was using kind of like my personal account and I realized that was not a good idea. Well, it's interesting. Uh, it's interesting because in the project I just showed you, you <laughs> students who are using it said, use my Instagram account. Are you kidding me? <laughs> right? So they, yeah. they immediately created an, their own Instagram account for that, for this project. Right. So last year it was, it was split last year. I did it all as hashtags. And then I was like, we were just, it was too much Instagram. So then some kids were making their own. And so this year I made them make their own Instagram account. So the one I'm showing right here is Oakland Food Desert. So that's one of the groups. And you can see this is their flyer that they posted. Uh huh. So ready to post these around the school. Okay. Yeah. Um, here's the diabetes one. They're showing what teachers have signed their petition. Hmm to lower the cost of insulin with the American Diabetes Association. And they signed the petition through Instagram? So the petition, that was what their project is. They're doing political organizing. And so they got, they found a petition the American Diabetes Association is doing to lower insulin costs. And they're trying to get parents and teachers to sign the petition. Okay. As upstanders. <laughs> So this is what they're posting on Instagram is they need to show themselves doing the action. Mm -hmm. So, so cool. you see them all. Can you find the gun one or not? That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Um, let's see. Should, then they have stories. Let's see. There, this one should be it. So here is the gun one. Mm -hmm. So... This is them preparing slides. They presented to a middle school class and they're doing a moment of silence. Cool. Hmm. The Gay Straight Alliance, are they presenting? Oh, that one's really active. active. Yeah. Where is theirs? Something rainbow. That one's been really cool. Everything rainbow. So they made a story. So how do they, oh, cool. Wow. <laughs> How do how do how do all four access the same account? They just share the password. Yeah, they have the logins. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, so here are their hashtags for the rainbow. Um, this was them presenting. I mean, they have so many followers. Talk to Biden. 106 <laughs> followers in four days. Mm. Yeah. It's amazing. It yes, cool. my math teacher. Yeah, so, they, started, they made a Pride Day. We like haven't had a Pride Day this year, so they started that. It's it's been pretty impressive. I'm not it, one for social media, so it's pretty cool to see them do that. <laughs> you're not one for social media, yeah, right? Um, I'm really not. I'm okay. really on my Instagram. But I'm glad I'm, you're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I I'd love for a lot more teachers to not be about social media the way you are. Um, <laughs> now, the everything rainbow land is a, is a, a, that is that URL up there? Um, yeah, that is a, at the, that is a URL. Mm -hmm. Do we, let's say on the gun, well, I don't know. I don't know. What I don't, mean. I can go back to the gun violence one. Doesn't matter. I know um, the one about pro choice. Mm -hmm. Theirs is actually very interesting because they have gotten like very feisty, but they put the tiny URL, I believe leads to their 
Yep, leads to their youth voices. Uh -huh. So they included their post, which is great. Yeah, it is. That's nice. Um, I'm 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 actually more interested in doing the opposite though. Cut, do me a favor. Uh -huh. if, are you logged into Youth Voices, or you could do it? I can be. Is very to use these seven minutes this way in a sort of geeky way to see how it works? Okay. I mean, tell me if it's not. So copy the URL up there, and let me just see if we can embed the uh, Instagram URL. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Okay, I'm logged in. Now on Youth Voices, go to their post. Hit okay. that tiny URL. Yeah. Let me see. Standard. You have. Do you want me to share my youth voices screen now. Would that be more helpful? Well, you you can keep sharing the screen you have and just go to the next tab. It'll it'll work. The abortion rights tab up there. Abortion rights tab. Oh, I see. But I'm I logged in That's on a different right. thing. Oh, okay. If you refresh it, probably will. Will it? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Go to edit. And let's see if we can add. Let's see what happens if we just try the embed function. It may not work, but it may. Should I put it at the bottom or top? Yeah, let's put it at the bottom where they put their find. Yeah, before the. Yeah. Yeah, finally we have an Instagram called Pro Choice. <laughs> yeah. So, right, to hit that. Hit that one. Yep. And then let's hit. Uh, yeah, there you go. Let's see if it works. Oh, uh, we cannot embed that content, it says. Okay. Should I convert to a link? Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's, but it won't embed. So we can bet, embed it with an iframe, but that'll take more coding. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> um, oh, we tried. So, where in this post, though, so I can go back and do it, is that um, is that Instagram? That's it. Yeah, pro choice over life. So okay. They should all have it at the bottom in like their conclusions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is probably an Instagram embed um, block that I'll look for, and we'll see if we can make this work. But and I mean, that, I can have the students do it. When we figure it out, they'll all be very stoked. Okay, great. Because <laughs> they're all for their Instagrams. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. One of the nice, one of the cool things about this block system is that people are developing different kinds of blocks that you can then import. Okay. So there's probably already an Instagram block that we just have to import in. And then, yeah, we'll try to make that work. Yeah, that would be cool, wouldn't it? It would be so really that, cool. Yeah. Because I mean, I mean, you can see right here even this. They interviewed someone. Oh, it was yeah. like, when you, watch you know how how cool. That is very mm -hmm. cool. Not at all an ask of the project, which is why I love this project because I just feel like they run with it. Yeah. In a really fun way. Stay here for a second. I mean, stay on. In, go to um. Go back to the front page. You don't. The Instagram or the Youth Voices. The Youth Voices. I want to try looking at one other place, which is, um, yeah, um, find the upstander category again under select category is probably the easiest way. Yep. I'm uh, sorry, I, I mumbled that. Uh, there you go, you found it. Now, just to say, we could also put a list of their. Instagram accounts on this page, right? Mm -hmm. So let's think about that too. All right, anyway, I'm not sure. Um, but let's, let's def, I mean, I love that the, you're doing both of those things and being able to get to the Instagram account fast would be great to do. Right? Yeah. Maybe it would just be a list on here, right? So if you go to edit category at the top, just to show you where this, why not? We're here now. <laughs> See the description box there. We mm -hmm. could we could put a list of of here here are a bunch of Instagrams to go find. Oh, I see. Standard Instagrams to find, right? So, yeah, we should do all of that. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, I, I think they'd be into that. Yeah, okay. Um, and maybe actually as I'm hearing all of this and with their Instagram, maybe I should have them do a follow-up post before the end of the year, like on Thursday next yeah. week, where they have to post with pictures from their Instagram, you know, kind of a how did it all go post. That'd be nice, yeah. Because then they could use the pictures from Instagram. Yeah, and then they can use Although the photos. They're hard, they're hard to, in, to download, I guess. Mm. It just makes me think of your comment, Chris, about, you know, with the gun violence, was that our students? Right. So mm -hmm. it would be nice for them to get to write about what they actually did. So before we started recording, I asked you, so I want to get to San Jose State. Can you explain that whole thing? <laughs> so that's oh, interesting yeah, I just, I, I, try, I try to get commenters wherever I can go. Um, I have uh, linked up with some professors at San Jose State and UC Riverside who are in teaching the education schools there that teach adolescent or like teen classes or English classes. And they have their students write comments on my students' posts. Mm. Have they started doing it yet? I, I think the answer is yes. But yeah. They have? yeah. Okay. I think there's some Riverside students and some San Jose students. Uh-huh. Yeah, and they also do it for um, my Oakland blog posts and our shadow boxes at the beginning of the year because they're Chris, learning you know, about teenage identity. And is Erin Hodgson one of the people who connected? Yeah, this? Erica is one. And you Ellen. know her too, right, Chris? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Ellen is what? Ellen's the person. Ellen Medow. She's the one at San Jose. She used to be at Mills. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're all part of like the ETA cohort. Mm -hmm. And then Dina is a new person. So I'm showing the commenting page, am I? I'm yeah, not. Kim and Dina are new. Um, let me stop sharing my screen. Maybe that will help. No, it doesn't work. It says you're no longer presenting. Yeah, I know. I'll, I'll, I'll just buy it. It? There it goes. Okay, so um, I know who Eden is. We know who Sam is. Allison probably is. Do yep. You support. Yep. So that's probably one of the college students. Mm hmm So is Dustin. Okay. So that's really cool. And just to say, one of the oh, Allison's done a couple. Is that right? I, know, I, I think just, they were all assigned to, is what their professor told me. <laughs> but that's very cool. The other thing we've done with for folk, kid, youth in colleges is to have them write about their experiences up until who they are now, but with mm -hmm. with the with the high school audience in mind. Wouldn't that be cool? I think that yeah, would that's be really cool. cool. Yeah. But so thank you for making that connection and let's keep making it. Yeah, there's, that's great. There's a there's a teacher from Chicago who's jumping on the site with his students who's in that in that group also. But yeah. That's so, cool. Very cool. Um thank you. I we want you to come back to you teachers teaching teachers more often. <laughs> You yeah, and I, I still have some questions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just, I, I'm really impressed so with the let's project. Let's and, end this with questions. Go ahead. <laughs> well, just, um, I mean, there are more questions than we have time, but um, I'd like to, we kind of walked through some of the steps. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd like to see the time frame again and then just kind of maybe even look at a student and how they progress through it mm. if we had time yeah um i'm like i said i'm because i don't get to collaborate with like anyone i'm always looking to collaborate so um i'm down to share materials because i think that's just how yeah. anyone grows as a teacher so i just threw up this is like our calendar it happens pretty fast, but I have them every day for 80 minutes. So that is definitely yeah. a huge benefit. So uh, this all started April 15th. The project part. We started, 
uh right when we got back from spring break so when was that maybe like march 30th or so okay. in terms of talking about actions and social change and vincent chin as our case study yeah you know um one of my questions and there's no answer to this but <laughs> joe paricio started a project right after charlottesville um with brand new ninth graders having them look at like an issue that's important to them and she did it in in august right i remember those we commented on those right so 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 the question that leads me to is what if you did this project first right although i is it your it is your kids who do the identity project is that right yeah the shadow boxes yeah the shadow boxes are amazing um so i wouldn't want to take away from that but <laughs> but but do you hear the question there like what if you started this at the beginning of the year instead of at the end i don't know yeah i I'm think not suggesting it. It's, yeah no i think it's it's always a good question mm -hmm. You know? But I do like the, your idea of the reflective part uh, once it's all done. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, we do it, you know, out loud as a showcase, but I think for it to go into writing is, is important. And also to your point, Paul, like I just wish other teachers at my school used this because I, I can say what it works, how it works for seniors. Cause I see Joe's work, right. With them being able to post their research yeah. And get feedback from a community and what that would look like if they were starting on Youth Voices in ninth grade. Right? Their investment to the site would just be so much higher. Not only that, they're already, they don't have to become known to that teacher, right? There's a, mm -hmm. there's a, the teacher could look through those five posts that they have up from their shadow boxes on. Yeah. And really, really get a sense. How, this was a group project and you and I have emailed each other back for, um, about the difficulty WordPress has with having group um, posts, uh -huh. like putting multiple names on something. We can put multiple names on something, but the, it doesn't go to their activity page and so forth. So I'm not sure how much it's worth it, but how are you handling it? Like I, I noticed some kids are posting, there are multiple posts with the same post with different names? Yeah, we've had two group posts. One was the dystopian presentations. Uh -huh. And then there was this one. I didn't think of any creative way. It was just pick someone in your group to post. Okay. <laughs> um, I loved last year how they got to be collaborating authors. I thought that was really cool. So we can we can still do that. Do you, you have the list somewhere? It's only twenty four kids. We can manage that. Yeah. So I, I know this year some of them messed it up and like all of them posted, which got confusing for comments. But all right. I don't know. I'm not going to give up on that. We can we can okay. figure that out. Can't. And and so the, the the documents that you're willing to share there, mm -hmm. one of the things we could do is on your school page, we could add a link to those documents and say, you know, if you want to learn more about our upstander project, would that be a easy enough thing to do? Oh sure. Okay. So share that with me and I'll kind of figure that out. Okay. Cool. Um thank you. Obviously, more work to do. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah, thanks a lot. But Kristen, I, I love how this uh, research thing is bubbling here and there. Mm -hmm. But as you and, and as you said, the dystopian thing. Chris does great work with dystopia too, right? Oh, so, nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so, if you're doing that next year, we'll have to coordinate. <laughs> yeah. That. When do you do it? When in the year? Um, you know, I typically, um, do it around election time. Ah. Uh, yeah, especially Orwell's work seems to be. But Chris, you know, sorry, when we're thinking yes. about pulling together curriculum for letters to the next president, quote unquote, maybe that should be oh. a thread that we make more public and available to people, maybe through playlists, for example. Right, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's going to be election time real soon. Right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
but I'm flexible, so we, we can figure that out. Before we come up with more ideas, we should stop. Yes. <laughs> I know my mind is bubbling. It is really, okay. I remember when, before the, the current person was elected, um, when it was just election season was one of my first times I posted on Youth Voices and we were reading dystopians. And I posed the question, how does your book relate to, I guess at the time it was 2016, I don't know, 17, whatever the year was right before yeah. that. Mm. 2015, I don't know, whatever. I did, how does, I did 15, yep. yep. Yeah, how does it mm -hmm. compare to today? Cause they're, you know, reading V for Vendetta in 1984 and Fahrenheit 451 because I didn't know how to handle the election sort of, and they just were able to jump there. I mean, they were all just, you know, V for Vendetta is make, you know, Britain great again. Like it couldn't right. have been more obvious and, you know, they're all just, it's, it's wild. It is, it is wild how, how those books, are just more relevant than ever before. Mm, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> it will be interesting <laughs> as we enter that next cycle. All right, mm -hmm. so we're gonna be working on some of this this summer. So let's uh, cool. talk into each other. Yep, yep. Yeah. So, Chris, Nina, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Paul. You. Okay. Thanks, Nina. Yeah, thanks, Chris, so much. Talk to you okay, soon. Okay, night.